Hello, um, this is Kisa Kwan from South Korea. Um, I'm happy to present my research uh, in our conference, uh, Asian Society for Innovation and Policy. And um, uh, today I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, changing environment of uh, technological innovation system in South Korea due to the COVID-19. So um, I have worked with uh, Yubin Kim from NAFI and Soyeon Park from Seattle University. So um, as you know, the Korean uh, innovation system, Korean economy uh, has been uh, rapidly uh, catch up by other developed countries due to the technological innovation uh, system, technological innovation. So recently, uh, we think that the uh, outbreak of COVID-19 in South Korea uh, encouraged the fundamental change of our economy as well as the innovation system. So uh, we'd like to predict, forecast the change of Korean innovation system. So uh, against this uh, background, uh, this uh, research, uh, aims to uh, identify what kind of driving forces um, is um, occurred in our innovation system. So um, to do this, uh, we uh, organized uh, some systematic way method to uh, identify the driving forces of the Korean innovation system outside of the system. So, um, as you know, the, um, the recent situation, uh, we uh, developed, uh, we um, set up, build up a, a new method uh, combining quantitative and qualitative uh, method of uh, technological forecast. So, for example, the trend analysis and the Delphi method is a qualitative uh, way and where is the mega trend scenario uh, is, um, uh, sorry, um, the trend analysis in Delphi method is uh, more suitable for the short term foresight uh, in contrast to the mega trend and scenario have a, uh, a more have a advantage for the long term foresight and also uh, Statistical modeling and uh, the um, uh, computational modeling has uh, more suitable for the quantitative data in uh, technological foresight. But uh, in reality, as you know, the those methods are uh, combined, used uh, used in a combined way. So in this research, we combined uh, qualitative. Uh, method as well as uh, quantitative method. So in chapter three, we suggest a way of uh, combine, combining method. As you see here, the firstly, in the first stage, expert panel, uh, we run the random expert panel. So uh, the experts are uh, encouraged to freely suggest their opinion about uh, what is uh, most important driving forces for in the situation of the COVID-19. And to the, at the second stage, the cross-impact analysis uh, enable us to uh, identify the relationship between the uh, different forces. So based on this, we can uh, Identify, we can generate the uh, critical axis for uh, create, creating different scenarios for the future. So, uh, the last stage is the scenario planning. So, we can suggest uh, a few, several scenarios, different scenarios for the uh, future due to the COVID 19.
So the result is, um, as you see here, uh, we uh, generate a different uh, driving forces uh, in the area of society, technology, and uh, in economy, environment, and politics. So in different five categories, we suggest more than 30 uh, forces. And as you see here, we um, scored the uh, relationship between the different uh, driving forces identified from the expert, expert panel. So based on the social network analysis program, we drew a picture, the relationship between uh, the different, uh, different driving forces. So as you see here, the uh, circle uh, means the uh, driving forces in the area of economy, and the triangle is the environment, and the rectangular, rectangular, rectangular is, the, uh, is in the area of politics. So, and also the size of nodes uh, means the uncertainty. So the uh, bigger size means that uh, very uh, highly uncertain uh, driving force. And the darkness, uh, the de degree of darkness is uh, uh, proportional to the size of the uh, intensity of the impact. So the, uh, the black, uh, black nodes means the uh, very highly uh, highly, uh, the impact is very high. So we have identified four axes is important. So first axis is uh, um, the pollution, uh, the forces related to pollution. The second axis is uh, regional autonomy. And third axis is about uh, uh, the manufacturing industry in the domestic uh, market. And the fourth axis is about the global value, the change of global value chain. So based on this four axis, because the, the axis is a very highly uh, uncertain factors, so uh, the uncertainty means uh, we can uh, predict different scenarios. So based on this uh, uncertainties, we can generate uh, many uh, possible scenarios. These predetermined factors is uh, uh, uncertainty is very low, but, uh, um, but the impact is very high. So uh, these uh, driving forces, predetermined factors can be uh, regarded as uh, uh, determined uh, situation, determined uh, given condition. So based on this given condition, uh, we can uh, draw, we can uh, imagine the uh, different scenarios based on the core uncertainties. So because the, we have identified uh, four uh, axes for core uncertainty, so uh, we can combine the uh, six com com combination so pollution and the region, pollution and the uh, large manufacturing industry, pollution and the global chain, the region and the, uh, the large manufacturing industry. So uh, we, in the panel, we uh, discuss about which combination is more uh, suitable for our, uh, our the background for generating our scenarios. So our fifth one is a region and the global value chain. Uh, we have chosen this combination because the, uh, those uh, factors uh, has a very uh, high impact and uh, coverage is the uh, uh, biggest among those uh, combinations. So uh, we have we, uh, as you see here, we have uh, four possibilities. So these are 
y axis shows the uh, emergence of region and the centralized system. So y axis shows the uh, regional factor and the uh, x axis uh, horizontal uh, horizontal axis and shows the uh, global value chain. So left is a restoring global value chain. Right axis is a right uh, right direction means the weakened global value chain. So those are uh, based on those two axes. We can generate four scenarios. Firstly, the most preferable uh, scenarios. Uh, which is named as the green light for the regional course. The second scenario is a fragile four. The third scenario is a return to the world region. So this is the most possible scenario among our scenarios. The last one is uh, the avoidable. We have to uh, avoid this uh, scenario. So growth by innovation and regional conflict. So let, uh, let's uh, go through the detail of the four scenarios. The first one is the most preferred scenario. So um, uh, in the, uh, from the viewpoint of the regional innovation. So um, this scenario, uh, the weekend based on, because the uh, global value chain is weakened and the centralized system has been weakened. So the region is come up as a very important actor in the uh, national innovation system. So uh, we can um, we can uh, predict the uh, new opportunity can be opened. So the region can um, plan their own R&D uh, picture and also vision strategy. So, uh, and also the environment is uh, global value chain is very weakened. So uh, very new technological opportunity can be uh, open for the regions in our uh, country. So this is the most preferred scenario among those uh, four scenarios. The second one is the fragile hope because the, uh, we assume that, uh, we imagine that the uh, restoration of global value chain. So the global value chain will not be changed, but the authority can be uh, devolved to the region. So uh, regional actors can uh, emerge as an important uh, actor, but uh, the, but the, uh, the environmental situation uh, is the same, is nearly same as the as before the COVID nineteen. So the hope is very fragile, and also very complex mechanism can be occurred uh, in this scenario. And the third one is the uh, uh, most possible scenario. Uh, it's a return to the world region. So the global value chain are restored to the same level and the um, centralized system will be uh, maintained as before. So um, the economy inequality and polarization can be intensified. So region uh, cannot be emerged as a critical actor in the regional innovation system. So um, the region uh, still uh, have a limitation to uh, innovate their own uh, uh, region. The third one is the avoidable scenario because uh, even though the global value chain has been changed, but the centralized system is still uh, have a power to planning the technology technological system. So uh, the situation is too complex. So policy responses cannot be uh, appropriately uh, cooperate uh, different uh, 
technological system, technological environment. So the uh, central government conflict, uh, central government conflict resolution function will be very critical. And also these are, uh, in a way, these uh, can result the strength amount of the uh, central, uh, central government's power in technological system. So um, as a conclusion, uh, in our research uh, based on the foresight method, we uh, wanted to identify the driving forces of the uh, technological innovation system after, since the COVID-19. So uh, the, in conclusion, we have to develop the, uh, we have to uh, enhance the endogenous uh, capability of the region uh, and also by this way, we can stimulate the power to find a new opportunity in those trends, in those changing uh, technological uh, environment. And also, uh, the central government have to boldly uh, admit uh, to devote their power to the regional authority. So based on this, the regional authority can uh, plan their own uh, technological plan and strategy. So based on this um, strategy, uh, we think that uh, the uh, national innovation system as a whole can um, be uh, more, can, can be more innovative uh, than uh, before the, the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, era. So this is the uh, conclusion based on uh, our research. Thank you for listening. And um, if you have any question or comments, um, we welcome. So um, I would like to finish my presentation. Thank you.